What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today we're going to be having a look at recoil in Modern Warfare, as well as the best attachments to use to mitigate the recoil. Now this is part of a short attachment guide series I'm going to be doing as a prequel to my gun guide series, where I go into great detail of all of the stats of every one of the weapons in the game. The reason I'm covering attachments first is just to make things a little bit easier once I get into the gun guides, so those are coming soon, but for now we're doing attachments, so let's hop into recoil. So if you guys didn't know, the recoil in Modern Warfare is similar to the way they handled it in Black Ops 4. This means that every gun has a very predictable recoil pattern. So the recoil will always follow the same general trend, the same general path, but it's not necessarily going to be exactly the same every time you fire a magazine. There is some variance mixed in there, it's just the same general path that the recoil will follow. Now when it comes to attachments this time around, it might seem very overwhelming just because there are so many attachment choices. But there are seven main attachments that will have a direct impact on your recoil in this game that are typically shared across all of the normal guns in the game. All of the regular like SMGs, LMGs, assault rifles for instance. There are really only seven attachments to focus on here. Now many of the guns also have unique attachments like conversion kits that will have an impact on recoil, but those will be covered separately in the gun guide series because it just doesn't fit within the scope of this video. I'm focusing on the attachments that are common across most guns in the game. In the muzzle category, we've got muzzle brake as well as compensator. In the underbarrel category, we've got commando foregrip, the merc foregrip, the ranger foregrip, and the operator foregrip. And finally, in the rear grip category, we've got the rubberized rear grip. Now with these attachments, if you look at their effects within the menus, there are actually two different effects that directly impact your recoil. These are recoil stabilization and recoil control. And they are different, I'll explain the differences a little bit later on after we look at the testing. But before we do that, there's one more that you might be wondering why I'm not including in this video, and this is aiming stability. Now, aiming stability has no impact on your actual recoil in the game. All it does is it reduces your idle sway. So what this means is when you're aiming down sight without firing your gun, your gun will sway around a little bit. The aiming stability characteristic is what will either reduce or increase this. So that has an effect on your first shot accuracy, but it doesn't have an effect on the actual recoil of the weapon. So that's why I'm not going to be covering that particular characteristic in any greater detail in this video. So now that we have the important groundwork laid out, let's start getting into the recoil tests. And first up, we have the M4A1. As you can see with this gun, it kicks primarily vertically, but it does tend to veer a little bit to the right. When we have a look at all of these recoil attachments, you can see that there is some variance, and almost all of these tend to reduce your recoil by a small margin. It's not a massive amount by any means, just throwing one particular attachment on isn't going to basically make your gun a laser beam, but they all do seem to help a little bit, with the exception of the rubberized rear grip. That one just doesn't seem to do all that much at all. Technically, it is a slight reduction, but it's barely noticeable at all, so I wouldn't necessarily recommend that one, at least for the M4. But one thing I want you to pay attention to here is the compensator. This one reduced the recoil more than any of the other attachments here and you're going to start to see a trend as I go through some other weapons as well. So next up we have the AK-47 and with this one the recoil tends to kick quite strong initially and it's pretty much straight vertical. There's a little bit of side to side bounce as well but it doesn't veer in any direction. It goes straight up and it kicks quite a bit especially with your first few shots. Having a look at the attachments once again we see the compensator comes out on top when it comes to total recoil reduction. But again, you see that same sort of trend as with the M4A1. All of the other attachments, they do help a little bit with the recoil, but it's nothing too crazy individually. Don't worry, we're going to look at combinations after we look at a couple more guns here. So next up we have the MP7, and this one also kicks fairly strong vertically, and it just veers a little bit to the right. And once again, just like with the AK, a lot of our recoil comes from the first few shots, and then it tends to slow down a little bit as it gets further up. And when we look at all the attachments, Again, same trend here, which is good to see. It's good to see that we're seeing some definite trends. All of these attachments are helping a little bit with recoil. Compensator seems to help the most with that total magnitude of your recoil. And this just brings us to the final gun that I tested for this video, and this is the AUG. And with this gun, we see the same story once again. Although the Commando foregrip, we did actually get a little bit more total vertical recoil than the base recoil, which could have just been a slight outlier. Like I said, there is some variance within the recoil patterns. So at the end of the day, these wall tests aren't the most scientific thing out there, but you can clearly see some trends here, which is the main purpose of this, just to see the trends. I'm not looking for exact measurements within this video. I'm just trying to find out which ones tend to be the best at controlling your recoil. 
And a clear trend that we've been seeing with all of these guns is the compensator definitely seems to reduce the total magnitude of recoil more than any of the other attachments out there. However, that's not the end of the story. There's definitely more to look into when it comes to this because it's not all about the total magnitude of your recoil and how much your gun kicks upwards. There's another factor we have to look at when it comes to getting the best performance in the recoil department. And this is where we're gonna break down the difference between that recoil stabilization and recoil control within the attachments menu. Recoil stabilization applies to only two of these attachments. These are the muzzle brake and the commando foregrip. All of the other ones have an impact on recoil control. And what I found in my test is recoil stabilization is how much your gun will bounce side to side as it kicks upwards. So it doesn't really have much of an impact on your vertical recoil. It's more so the stability of your recoil as it kicks up, just like the name would suggest. And this is something that's often overlooked when you're just looking at recoil tests being shot at a wall. Most people just see the total magnitude of that recoil, and that's not really the most important thing because vertical recoil is something that's really easy to compensate for. Plus, humans tend to be more vertical structures, and therefore if you're aiming towards their stomach, for instance, to start off, the recoil will just walk all the way up their body and you'll be on target the entire time. So recoil stabilization definitely shouldn't be overlooked, but at the same time, it is nice to reduce that vertical recoil and keep the guns in check especially for enemies that are on a piece of cover where you don't really have that body to walk your recoil up on and you want to keep that recoil down into a concentrated area. So as you might have guessed, recoil control is the variable that impacts your total vertical recoil or the magnitude of your recoil. And it seems pretty clear based on my tests that the compensator is the best out of all of the other attachments when it comes to this vertical recoil control. So going back to those recoil tests with fresh eyes here, you can start to see when you compare the compensator with the commando foregrip, for instance, on the M4, you can see that compensator as it's kicking upwards, it's got quite a bit of horizontal variance and that can throw you off target. Whereas with the commando foregrip, you get a nice straight line upwards. And we see this exact same trend if you're just looking at compensator versus the commando foregrip, so yellow versus purple, you see that same trend with all of these guns. So at the end of the day, when it comes to getting the best possible recoil control out of your weapon, it's first off important to note the difference between the stabilization and control. And also it's important to note that individual attachments don't have a large impact on your recoil reduction in this game. However, we really start to see the benefit when you stack these. And what I've found is it's always really nice to stack something with recoil stabilization alongside something with recoil control. And there's actually one particular combo that I've found is best for me just based on all of these tests and putting everything together. And this is the combination of compensator because that gives us the best vertical recoil control and the commando foregrip, which gives us that recoil stabilization because we can't combine a compensator with a muzzle brake because they're in the same category. So let's have a look at what that combination looks like. First off, we have the M4 here. You can see with the combination of compensator and commando, we do get a pretty noticeable reduction to our recoil, but it's not quite as crazy as I thought it might be. With the AK, once again, we get a really solid reduction to our recoil and it definitely looks a lot better when you combine compensator and commando grip. As for the MP7, we really do start to notice a great recoil reduction in this particular area. You can see everything is much tighter together. This makes a massive difference for the MP7. And finally with the AUG, I got the best results here. This was incredible. You can see just how much compensator and commando grip reduces your recoil. It makes this thing pretty much a laser beam. There's just a little bit of recoil to compensate for, which is really nice to have. So in all, after all of this testing that I did for you guys, what I found is recoil attachments aren't really necessary on their own. Individually, they don't have that much of an impact on your weapon, maybe a little bit, but often not enough of an impact to affect the outcome of any of your gunfights. However, when you start combining them, this is where you really start to see the benefits. Also, like I said, if you are going to be going for a combination, always try to combine something with recoil control and recoil stabilization because these work hand in hand to give you the best possible recoil control in the game. And with that, we're gonna wrap up the very first attachment guide for you guys for Modern Warfare. In the next episode of this, I'm gonna be getting into the aim down sight speed for various attachments. And the results of this are probably gonna surprise a lot of you guys, especially those of you guys that didn't pay attention to my channel during the beta. This particular stat isn't something that you need to worry about as much as you might think. So if you want to catch that video, as well as a ton of other breakdowns and tips for Modern Warfare, including my gun guide series that will be coming as soon as I'm done covering the attachments, 
Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on those notifications. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys next time.